Who are the Browns going to take in the upcoming NFL draft? We have no idea, but we're going to talk about it anyway. The Rizzo Show starts now. The Hard Rock Roxino Northfield Park presents The Rizzo Show. And now your host, Tony Rizzo. Oh, yeah! I feel a draft. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Draft Preview Edition of the Rizzo Show. Joining me tonight, my co-host, Mike Polk, Jr., and we welcome in Michael Brown's analyst, Tony Grossi. Tone, are we ready for Thursday night? It's our annual Super Bowl, right? It and, really and, is. And we, we play yeah. on Thursday night this year. Guys, yeah. when are we not going to say that? When are we not going to be able to say? After this year, this is the draft. When we get it right, I'm calling it now. Tone, I like that attitude. I, I feel a positive vibe. Did it sound with believable? What's going what on? I was yeah, saying? sure. That's good. From you, I'm yes. Out. I've been practicing it in a mirror. <laughs> Tony, all kidding aside, though, there is some optimism this year. We've got an actual GM who's done this before and has had nice. success, right? Right, right. And and he, he's talked all this whole process about watching film and, and interviewing players and not running spreadsheets to find out who the best quarterback of this draft is. So I'm very encouraged about. Uh, the meticulous process that he's gone through. Isn't it funny though, the very fact that you just said that, the fact that we have to, we're like, we got a guy this year who's we're done celebrating this before, yeah, yeah. who has had some history picking players and stuff, so we think that might help. It reminds me of when they cleaned up Edgewater Beach, you know? <laughs> and they were like, we, hey, did we really fix this place up? They're like, we started picking up the trash. That's how we turned this baby around. It's common sense, and I'm glad that they're finally following yeah. this path. All right, Tone and Mike, let's take a look at a couple of your mock drafts, Tony. This is the first one you posted. Back on March the 2nd, you have the Browns going with Sam Darnold and Minka Fitzpatrick, who is a defensive back, right? Yep, but, from but Alabama. The Brown, but the Browns signed four defensive backs right. in free agency. Right, this was back in February. We were so uh, young. <laughs> it was before free agency, and, and that's why we do one every week since, because things change. And, and don't one, forget the Jets hadn't traded up to three yet, so you correct. had the Colts. Taken now. Here's the 5.0. This is uh, over a month and a half later, and you have switched it up because you know obviously the Jets are going to want a quarterback, but you still have the Browns taking Sam Darnold. There's a trend there, right? Darnold one, Chubb four, uh, and now we're up to uh, 8.0 uh, uh, with the, the final one to be 9.0, and that's going to be my right, official right prediction the Thursday. Tony, why Sam Darnold? Why why do you think he's the pick? There are a lot of people that are mocking Josh Allen, yeah. the kid from Wyoming, rather than Darnold. Well, I think it could go either way at this point, to be honest with you, and, and maybe by Thursday I'll have a stronger conviction on one or the other. Right now I, I've been penciling in Darnold. Uh, very productive, accurate, big, mobile, uh, good character guy. Uh, you, can, you can envision him as the face of the franchise. Uh, I, I don't find a lot of negatives. The only negative that people harp on, and it is a negative, is that he fumbled the ball a lot his last year. Mm -hmm. uh, if the coaches and, and Dorsey believe that's very correctable, there's not much left to nitpick from Sam Darnold. This is a choice, though. This is what you think is going to happen. This isn't necessarily what you want to happen. Is it, what do you want to have happen? Well, in this case, it kind of coincides. I, I kind of like uh, Darnold uh, more now than this whole thing started for me at the, at the Combine. Uh, actually, before that, I've watched USC games thinking that Darnold could be the guy. And actually, he had a terrible game against Notre Dame, one of the worst games uh, I've ever seen a major college quarterback have. And at that point, I kind of wrote him off. But now he, he looks better and better the, look, uh, the more I look at him. Uh, I, th I think he, he and uh, uh, Josh Allen are like neck and neck going to the finish line. That's the question. Does he look better and better? Or do these other quarterbacks to you look a little bit worse? Are you seeing more flaws? And that's why you're settling for Darnold? No, I, th I think they all could be pretty good. I know the odds are against that. There's going to be probably three bust outs. We're hoping to get the one that doesn't. Right. Based on the odds, uh, the last time three great quarterbacks came out of a draft was what? Uh, ben Roethlisberger, Philip Rivers, and Eli Manning. Um, I think this could be similar. Mm. Uh, I, I, you know, th there's little things you don't like because you have to separate uh, one. I think it's difficult this year. This is unique to have four mm -hmm. guys yeah. that you could all argue as the number one guy. Just our luck. I know, right? We, where's, our, where's our Andrew Luck here? There's not an know? easy pick there, in other words. Tone, assuming the Browns take quarterback at number one, we've seen what Hugh Jackson has done with other quarterbacks like Robert Griffin, Cody Kessler, Deshaun Kaiser. Should we be concerned or... How much does new offensive coordinator Todd Haley play into that? 
Well, I think he's going to play a big role in, in developing uh, the next quarterback. But I think Dorsey is also going to be a, playing a big role. And I think that's why they've set up, they've, they've shredded the quarterback room and rebuilt it. And I think it's, it's key what they did. They brought in a guy named Tyrod Taylor who can play right away and they think can win right away. They're not going to force in their next quarterback. Then they brought in a guy named Drew Stanton, who's the veteran mentor that we always talk about and they haven't really had here since McCown and even before that, Gary Danielson to Bernie Kosar. So I think Dorsey, this is part of Dorsey's way of helping this quarterback coming in. So has Hugh, has Hugh Jackson officially lost his title as the quarterback whisperer? Yeah, yeah we don't whisper point. that around Unless the facility. Unless he's just been saying to them, keep sucking, be inconsistent, <laughs> lose all your confidence. Uh, I, I think Dorsey believes it's an organization mandate to develop the quarterback. Mm. It's not up to one coach. Right. And, and he's going to make sure that this guy is brought along at the Music right pace. Music to my ears. Tone, Dorsey had a press conference on Thursday and, of course, said nothing. Did we learn anything from that? Um, I, th I think we learned, uh, one thing I learned is, is with, without saying it, you know, he's not going to, as I mentioned, he's not going to rely on some $100,000 analytics study to pick his quarterback. Mm. He's talking about doing the work and, and watching the film and talking to the player and, and to getting to know the player and people around him. So it's like grassroots scouting. Like Mike said, oh, well, doesn't that seem logical? Yeah, I mean, don't, don't every team d d do it that way? Right. Well. Not this team, the last uh, three or four baby quarterbacks. Steps, folks, baby yeah. steps. Tone, it's going to be his pick, though, Dorsey, right? How much will he rely on Hugh and, and some of his uh, assistants? Yeah, um, I think he's going to listen uh, a lot to what they have to say. I, I don't think he's a dictator on this decision, but it will be his call because uh, he's, he's mandated with, he's charged with uh, getting this franchise back on its feet, and to do that, it's getting the right quarterback. So he's not going to let anyone else pick his quarterback for him, but he's going to let him contribute to the discussion about it. Boy, you can see the connection those two are making right away. <laughs> they look like fast friends already, don't they? Tony, what about Jimmy? Is Jimmy on it? Tony, there were rumors that Jimmy was asking around the league yeah. about Josh Allen. He, we saw him at the pro days with a notebook. We, how much is the owner playing into this? Well, he is the owner, and, and he's, you know, he's a, he's a fan of the team he owns, and, and he's, got the, he's got the access to be involved uh, every step of the way. And uh, let's hope on the night of the draft that, you know, he's outside making a call to Tennessee about other business and not making the call on the quarterback. We're listening I, I to trust homeless people. Yeah, right. Just yeah, send yeah, him on right. vacation. Can uh, we just send him on vacation for a couple well, of weeks? I, I trust that, that Dorsey will not let that happen as others yeah. have allowed that to happen. All right, do you believe John Dorsey right now tonight, Tony, Sunday night, knows who he is going to be taking on Thursday? I do. I, that's one of the other things that, that I came across to me from that uh, final press conference he had this week. Um, I do think he knows who he likes. I do think they'll have a meeting yet, probably Monday, where he tries to get everybody on board and to buy into what he's selling because I think he's going to be the driving force on this. But I think he wants, he doesn't want anybody second guessing him. Like I, when the guy throws an interception, his first snap in practice, sure. he doesn't want people saying, I told you that, yeah. I told you that other guy. Was even done. though everybody's going to do that. Yeah, you, but, but they all have to embrace right. this guy. And even though it's, it's a divergent class and everyone has their own favorites, the, the point of the meeting is to get everyone, all right, I'm buying it. I'm buying it, John Dorsey. I'm buying it. Are you buying him? You've been through 20 regimes now, and you've <laughs> seen the worst and, and everything. So is this a guy? Do you actually have faith in this guy? Do you, how, what are your instincts on him? Yeah, I, I do. I do. I, my instincts on him are very positive. And that's why I'm very encouraged. I know we're all scarred. That's good to hear, We're man. deeply scarred oh, that yeah. they're going to miss we're scarred. this. Yeah, we're shelter uh, dogs. But, but I like, uh, uh, I know he doesn't say anything, and he comes across a little rough in press conference settings, but uh, he's a true talent scout. Yeah, good. Yeah, that's, that's what we need. Here. Well, it's going to be an exciting week, Michael. Coming up, will the Browns take at number four, or will they trade down? We'll give up some choice. I, I did say trade down. Please stay with us. With the first pick in the 2017 NFL Draft, 
the Cleveland Browns select Miles Garrett, defensive end, Texas A&M. Well, did we get it right? Most people believe we did. Welcome back, everybody. Rizzo Show, Mike Polk Jr., Tony Grossi here. We're talking Browns draft. Tony, what do you think of last year's number one, Miles Garrett? He missed, uh, what was it, five games? Five but, games. Uh, played in 11. Uh, what would you think? He had seven sacks in those 11 games. I really think uh, it, w it was disappointing in this respect. If, if he wouldn't have been hurt, you know, three days before the opener, he misses mm -hmm. the Pittsburgh game. It was a very close game. I, th I thought he would have made a difference which sets a, a whole different theme to the first the month season. of the season. He, and then he admitted recently that that high ankle sprain, which cost him the first four games, really cost him at the end too, because he didn't have the endurance, because he couldn't keep running. Remember in training camp, he used to do gassers at the end of practice, and he couldn't do that the rest of the year. Mm. Um, and so he was disappointed in his season. And you know, he had seven sacks in 11 games. That's almost statue material right. for Cleveland. <laughs> for I, I'm a big fan of him as a player. I, I think he's going to be excellent. I think he's going to be a Pro Bowl player. Speaking of defense, uh, might the Browns go defense tone at number four? We had Minka Fitzpatrick on our show at ESPN Cleveland. Do you think he gets the call? He's a guy we had slotted early, but lately he's been moving down. Well, in, in terms of the Browns, like, uh, in free agency, they added four defensive backs, and that's lessened the, the priority there. And I think now, uh, if they had their choice, it would be another pass rusher, Bradley Chubb. But I think there's a chance it could come, you know, circle back to Fitzpatrick if Chubb is not on the board at number four. Yeah. Uh, because they, he does so many different things, uh, you'll find a spot for him, or he'll find a spot in your defense. And that wouldn't disappoint you if, we, if they grab no, him? No, no. I mean, he's another high-character guy who was the only freshman to play immediately for Nick Saban in the defensive backfield. Mm. So he's qualified. What about Saquon Barkley, Tone? Explain to everybody why you don't think the Browns would take Barkley. Yeah, I've been saying that for a while now, and they're the only team that has a chance of passing on this guy, not once, but twice in the first four picks, and I think it can happen. Oh, I know. Um, the problem, not the problem, but the reasoning would be uh, never has John Dorsey been with a team that's taken a running back that high, uh, none higher really than a low second rounder. Uh, this also happens to be a pretty decent year for running backs after the best. Barkley's definitely the best. And his, uh, uh, Dorsey's history, uh, he believes in a running back by committee approach where you don't have that one meal ticket that you're relying on and focus everything around. So if you're looking for the final piece of that committee, right. you're not going to expend a fourth pick in the draft on him. But if that kid, you want to ensure that kid's success, have us pass him up twice, twice. in the first oh my God, round. You think that just guy like automatic? That guy's in the Hall the, of Fame. The minute we said pass him up twice, yep. right? Yeah. Um, what about we we did that with Clay Matthews Jr. By the way, actually I thought we passed three, him up three, three times. times. Mm -hmm. What about Bradley Chubb? You mentioned Chubb yeah. Tone. We love him. I know the Browns love him, but the Giants look like they might be tabbing him at number two. Well, it would be. Uh, uh, the, a trend of, of the Giants to always look at their defensive line. Um, they have to also look at quarterback at number two. And, and I think what the Browns do at number one, the quarterback they take, could affect what the Giants do at two. Hmm. Uh, most people in New York, at least, feel that the Giants would only take Sam Darnold hmm. at quarterback. So if the Browns choose someone other than him, they could set themselves up possibly to take Chubb at four. I don't think that's the strategy, that's but strategy. Th that's the <laughs> you know? consequence yeah. of, of that happening. Uh, I think Chubb would be the ideal pick for the Browns at number four, and I think they believe that too. I agree with that, and I, I, that'd be exciting. I, I think that, I mean, him and Miles Garrett there together. But what do you not want? I'll tell what you do you not want. want? Do not trade down. Tone. Use the picks. Tone. At four, uh, it's in play, isn't it, trading down? It is. So the question is, if the Giants take Chubb, uh, and the Browns are looking at Barkley, who I don't believe they would take, and, and others. What do they do? Do they reach for Fitzpatrick or Denzel Ward of Ohio State, the cornerback? Um, I think they would be uh, uh, listening to trades at that point. It doesn't mean they would. Uh, they'd still have to be bowled over and, and maybe take Ward or Fitzpatrick lower. Uh, what would it have to be for you? What kind of a trade? Where, how far down in the first round would you well, be willing I, to go? Yeah, ideally, you wouldn't slip to more than six. Mm -hmm. Now, the Colts have dropped back to six. They don't want to go up to four because uh, they've gone from three to six. If, if Buffalo could go up to six as a stepping stone to the Browns right. pick at four, I think going from four to six would be easily done for the Browns. They'd still get the player they right. want if Chubb is gone. Whatever happens, you're going to watch it right here on Fox 8, the best place 
to watch the draft. Michael and I will actually be part of our pre-draft coverage. Yeah, we got some shenanigans going on Beginning for at 7 o'clock right here on Fox 8 coming up Thursday and Friday. To be honest, Tony, I think we've been talking drafts since October. Since the Browns were <laughs> half time of a since third, we were 0 and 5 or 0 and 6, so. yep. I'm sick of it and I want it to be over. We all coming do. up, Mike Polk in a time machine. We're firing it back up, folks. You have to <laughs> see it to believe it. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Rizzo Show, everybody. Well. It is time. Michael, you are going to go back in time for us I tonight. I sure am. This is a tradition that we have going now. This will be our third year, and one day this uh, is going to stop being relevant. Take a look. Mike Polk invented a time machine with some stuff he found around his garage. But he doesn't use the time machine to help mankind by stopping wars or preventing disasters. The only thing he ever does is go back in time to stop the Cleveland Browns from making bad draft picks. So then we're all agreed we're going to use our first pick on Courtney Brown, right? Agreed. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. No! Don't draft Courtney Brown. He'll always be injured. Draft LeVar Arrington. I'm from the future. Who the hell was that? I don't know. But that time-traveling wizard made sense. Maybe we should rethink this. He could be a lottery millionaire, or he could save that girl who fell down a well. But the only thing he does with his time machine is help the Browns make respectable picks. So it's settled then. Gerard Warren it is. Absolutely. Yep. No! Don't draft Gerard Warren! He'll never live up to expectations! Draft Drew Brees! Wait, how are you doing this? No time to explain! I'm from the future! Well, he was right last time. Yeah, yeah, it's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. He's squandering his power as a lord over time because he wants his team to make good decisions. So, where is he? It's usually when he shows up. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Draft day. Yeah. I have no idea who to take this year. No, we didn't even send any scouts out. No. So. I haven't watched football at all this year. No. no. Hey! Whoa! Oh, stop! Don't just tell us who to draft. Tell us about the future. There's so much we can learn from you. Please use this miracle more wisely. Don't draft Brian Rubisky. He sucks. Come oh, on. No. Yeah. No Brian Rubisky. Nope. He's a time traveling draft advisor. If oh. only. If only, if right? Only, right? You know? The technology is almost Let's look there. ahead. Who are you going to tell me not to draft this year? Hard to tell. Well, whoever we pick, probably. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Elon Musk, get on that time machine. We need that thing. Um, when we return, we will open up the Rizzy Vault. But before we go, let's see what's happening at the Roxino this week. Hey there, rock stars. I'm Hannah, and this is What's Up with the Roxino. Blame it on the rain with our $150,000 Make It Rain Mania at the Hard Rock Roxino Northfield Park. Every Saturday, you could win your share of $150,000 during our hourly drawings from 3 to 7 p.m. 25 winners will win $1,000 in free play or $15,000 in cash. Earn entries daily, plus earn two times the entries if you're a Hall of Fame member and three times the entries if you're a legend. Treat yourself to an amazing four-course meal special in Cozart's wood-fired grill without breaking the bank every Sunday through Thursday and delight in the Cozar's Happy Hour each Sunday through Thursday from 3 to 6 p.m. featuring delicious bites from the exclusive Happy Hour menu. Don't miss the hilarious Dane Cook when he takes the Roxino stage on Friday, May 11th. First show sold out in record time, so we added a second show at 10.30 p.m. Tickets on sale now at the Roxino box office or Ticketmaster.com. Find your rhythm at the Hard Rock Roxino Northfield Park. Vegas Experience, Ohio Address. Um, uh, don't forget, stay tuned to our friends Big Chuck and Little Chuck. <laughs> they are coming up next. Time to open up the Rizzy Vault. I've got the best draft pick we've ever made in the history of Cleveland right here. Remember this? With the first pick in the 2003 NBA draft, the Cleveland Cavaliers select LeBron James. Look at how young LeBron looks. How great was that night? That was one of my favorite nights ever. I was there in New York that night working for Fox 8 News. 
Tony, do you think LeBron could have played pro football if he didn't play basketball? Oh, gosh, yeah. He'd have been a tight end or uh, an unstoppable receiver. It's just a matter, though, could he take the hits and could he put up with them? That's uh, something. I know he gets slapped around in right. the NBA war. You, you're accusing him of flopping in the NFL. <laughs> he definitely can uh, about it. He definitely can Tone, thanks yeah. for being here with us. We, we always pleasure. appreciate it. Definitely Michael, so quick plug. Tuesday, <laughs> Tuesday, Tuesday night. Tuesday, Pickwick and Frolic. Come and check us out sometime. We're doing a show there. Pickwick and Frolic every Tuesday. Tone, everybody cross your fingers, kid. We got this, people. Draft this. night <laughs> is coming. Thank right. you. Good night. Good to be alive. It Good night, everybody. Now.